Recovering from knee surgery is highly variable. It was going to take forever to get better if I was ever going to get better. There's got to be something out there besides a CPM machine, which and clearly isn't helping get me. Active and aggressive with this thing, or I was going to. Need you know, I'm a guy that's not vision. looking to relieve the pain. I'm a guy that's looking to get back in the game. That downtime was not what I wanted. We've spent the last seven years perfecting the recovery system that takes variability out of knee rehab so you can quickly get back to your life. Welcome to The Bee's Knees, a podcast full of articles, interviews, clinical studies, and advice about knee surgery, physical therapy, and life after knee surgery. Hi, this is PJ, your host of The Bee's Knees podcast, and I just wanted to make a quick introduction of the speech, the talk that we have today. It's with Mary Harris, and she does a presentation to about a hundred people in the Villages, Florida. It's a group that we have called The Knee Group, and it meets monthly, and it's a wonderful uh, interaction for a lot of people to get their questions answered. And Mary, in this case, presents all about mobility, travel, and having some knee issues, and what you do about that when you want to take some exotic adventures. Mary and her husband, Harry, do this frequently, one or two trips a year, and in fact, she's starting to document that through wonderful work for the X10 Meta blog, as well as now here on the podcast. So I won't say much more. I'll let Mary do all the talking. It's about an hour. It's a great talk. Uh, you'll have some questions and answers from the group, but you'll get a lot of tips and tricks about your future adventures, even if you have some challenges with your own mobility. Again, this is Mary Harris talking about traveling and your knees. She's got some great advice. Before you go on any trip, know what your limitations are and whether the trip fits that style that you like and the limitations you have. As I said to those of you who were already in the room, my um, my limitations are that I have had knee surgery. My husband, who you will see on the videos, um, has also had knee surgery, each of us in, this, in one knee. I've had back surgery, and I also have some hip problems occasionally. Those are limitations, but I don't want to stop traveling because I love seeing the rest of the world. So I'm really a world traveler. Um, Probably because I, my, I grew up in the service. My father was in, we were in the Air Force. You notice Air Force families always say we were in the Air Force? Yeah, or we were in the Army. Yeah, the whole family is part of it. So I started to travel when I was six. And by the time I was a teenager, 18, let's say, um, I had lived in several countries, several, all, many, many states, and um, Europe, a couple of places. So I had I'd traveled, and it gets in your blood. So the idea is be prepared. Know yourself before you go, and know your limitations. Now, how do people like to travel? What's your favorite style of travel? Paul, if I may, what's your favorite style of travel? Cruises. Cruises. <laughs> Excellent choice. You get onto the ship, you unpack your suitcase, and it takes you wherever you want to go, right? Don't you going. don't care where it's going. Okay. <laughs> Paul, Paul just wants to go on a cruise. You like the food? Yes. Right? You like the food? I like it too much. And too much. We all like the food too much. And basically, unless the weather is rough at sea, it's not hard to get around, no, right? right? Okay. And do you have a travel partner here? Oh, Becky Becky travels. Okay, so I'll ask her. Beck, what, what cruise lines have you traveled with? Holland America, Princess. Regent, Princess, uh, the Royal Caribbean, Regent, American Cruise Line. <laughs> a lot of different cruise lines to choose from, a lot. And some cater more to people with physical limitations than others do. 
I brought a handout in the back. I don't think we're going to have enough, so please share. Um, that has some resources for those of us who are seniors, who have physical limitations, et cetera. Each cruise line has a different style. Find what you like. Now, if you've not cruised, you're in Florida. It's so easy to cruise. If you want to, to cruise, you can find really good bargains. Go to AAA. They'll help you out in planning. If you cruise, you have the options of either staying on the boat when they're in port or getting off. Usually all of the lines that you mentioned, you have to pay extra for those excursions. If you go with some of the other lines like Viking, Oceana, Regent, uh, there are others. Those are included very often, or a number of them are included. Know before you go. You're going to hear me say that over and over again. Know before you go. Anybody else traveled any other way than a cruise? Do you have, by the way, Paul, do you have any other thing to say about cruising and why you like it well, so much? We fly or drive, and we don't like either one of those. <laughs> <laughs> We've been on bicycle tours. Okay. And, you know, after about a week, you're ready to collapse, and enough of that, right? That's, ex that's exactly true. So let me see if I can find the slide as I am trying to talk to you. Um, we, a few years back, uh, let's see, we're not working at all. Oh, I have to do it. I, I'm doing it the wrong way. I'm sorry. Let me see if I can find. Yes. A few years ago, we took a transatlantic cruise on the Queen Mary, as you can see all the way up at the top. Now, know before you go. We knew that it was a formal sort of cruise. It was transatlantic, right? Wonderful food, absolutely amazing. Don't go on that line if you have food allergies, right, I'm warning. Try Oceana, try Royal Caribbean, Caribbean. They will work with you if you have any of those issues. Um, Royal, um, Queen Mary, though, was just a really unique, unique sort of experience. I had other pictures here, um, but I don't think we're going to find them. Oh, oh, I, have to, I have to remember, right? OK. This is. Um, I had slides in my, uh, in my organization that's now disorganized. I had slides of, oh, is it scrolling? Oh, oh my gosh, that's the first slide. How do I stop it? How do I stop it? Oh, I might have gotten it to go right. No, it didn't. Are we good, you think? Okay. And the first one is. And it's not coming up with the words either. There's words on several of those. Go ahead and you stalk. I'm going to try to find it. Here okay. Right. Okay, so the first slide that was up there showed a couple of things that I wanted you guys to, all, all of you, to note. And that is does anybody here find that they have to use a cane once in a while? I found this nifty cane, you may have found it too, that comes out of its little pouch. And wow. it, un it unfolds, right? So in the afternoon, sometimes, because we're doing a lot of walking, particularly in cities, or going up and down stairs, ouch, that hurts knees, doesn't it? Hurts backs, hurts knees. This really helps. We went to Israel last year. Did you know that Israel, everything goes up? Everything. There, there are stairs everywhere. Is this the first There's. Is this the first no, that's not the one. Um, um, that's it. That's it. 
Okay, this slide was to post, supposed to say, be prepared. All right? And I don't know where the words went. That's life, right? Anyway, um, I was talking about Israel and the fact that it was a tough trip. It was the trip that Paul said he didn't like. What didn't you like? Car trips and? What was that? The trip you didn't like was bus car? car trip. Bus trips. It was a bus trip, right, with a group. I was exhausted. We were up at 5.30, 6 o'clock every morning. We were lucky if we got to bed at 10. One, one night we didn't, right? Um, it was an exhausting, intense trip. You were walking. You were walking up and down stairs. You were walking along uneven surfaces. What do you do in that case? Sometimes you had to walk for a couple of miles, right? All right, first of all, you take your meds, yes. right? You take medication with you. Be prepared. I take my cane with me, all right? And I can take it out of a day pack when I feel the need and use it. You also tell your guide, look, I may not be able to stay up, stick, you know, to stay with the group. That's okay. I have limitations. Just keep your eye out for me. I'll be able to manage by myself. If that doesn't work for you, if you're not comfortable enough, you could hire your own city guide. You could um, stay back in the hotel. Ooh, that doesn't sound good. Or you could do just part of whatever the trip is for the day. You know, you may not see as much, but you'll get there. You'll get there. What other kinds of trips do we have? Bus trips are tough because you have to get on and off the bus. And sometimes they're handicapped buses and sometimes they're not. And if you take, if you take um, a group tour, usually the company will send you a brochure in the mail. Has anybody gotten Colette's? Has anybody taken a Colette trip? Usually they're pretty good because inside of their brochures, it will tell you whether the activity level is a one, two, three, four, or five. I don't know what a five is. I've never come across a five, but I suspect that Paul has taken it when he went on a bike trip, that, right? That was five plus. That was five plus, okay. Most of, the, most of the trips in here are a two or a three. A few of them, and I noted that many of them that were fours in the, the most recent Colette um, book were to Israel. Just saying, you know, it's, it's a tough place to go. Great place. I happen to like archaeology, but it was a tough, it was a tough place. Okay, so you can go on a bus tour, which is going to have limitations because you're going to be moving each and every day. However, there are places where you should take a bus tour if you go. And one of those is Costa Rica. Has anybody been to Costa Rica? Did you like it? Yes. Well, I was a science teacher, so you know what I thought of it? I was like crazy about the place. But you can't get there by yourself. We, we actually investigated hiring a car, getting a, you know, rent a car. Well, I'll tell you, we would never have found the roads. We would never have found the roads, let alone the history, the, the natural world that, that our guide was able to point out. And, oh well, okay, excuse me. And there were times where we had to take a boat to get there. So if you go 
to Costa Rica, and there are other places like that, take a tour. Take a tour, right? Any place else that anybody would recommend taking a tour? Taking a, a bus tour? Yes, sir. Right. To where, Mal? I'm sorry, I'm going to come back and... and s yes? Lake Louise, okay. And where else would you have to take a tour, do you think? I always take a tour. You always take a tour. Okay, this brings us to an interesting point, all right? You always take a tour. Tell me why. Because everything's done for you. Easy. Makes life much easier. And if you get sick, if your knee goes out, if your back goes out, etc., you've got somebody to intervene for you to make sure you get to a hospital, etc. And they have in-country people who will come to your aid. Any anything else you'd like anything else you'd like to tell us about taking a tour? Well, what you said is true. A lot of times you get up earlier than you'd like to and uh, stay up longer, but. I've always used a tour group out of uh, Connecticut called Talk. Yep. Talk Tours. Yep. Very, very, very good. Very good. I've only been on one of theirs, and Colette sent me the brochure, so I had it to bring, <laughs> which is why you got that one. But do make sure that you ask questions when you call up. Make sure that they are going to cater to your limitations. All right. There's another item in this picture. My husband did say yes, he would. He didn't mind. But there's something else I want to talk to you here about um, travel. Both of us have bottles of water. Drink water. Drink lots of water wherever you go. We happen to be at Masada here. This picture was taken, um, and some of you might even recognize this picture was taken last year, and it's very uneven terrain. It was springtime, and it was already 100 degrees, right? I travel with one of those cooling scarves. You know, you just put water on it, and it keeps you a little bit cooler. Um, I threw mine out. It was so stinky after the last trip that I just chucked it out. So I didn't have it to bring but at least it helps you in hot weather stay cool. Wear comfortable shoes. Whoa, lightweight for packing and comfortable shoes. Enjoy what you're doing. And that's so hard, isn't it, when you're in pain? It's so hard to enjoy, to be able to relax, etc. Hmm. <laughs> You're just turning me upside down. He is. Is that? Isn't that? That's what it is. Can you do that anymore? I can't. I can't get down like that. You know, sometimes it's hard to keep talking. Oh, we were going to come back to you. Water. Okay. We have another. We have another comment. Let's let's hear what someone else has to say. Plan on taking frequent breaks, <gasps> whether it's for a snack and a cup of coffee, but just plan it in your day that you're going to have to sit down and rest for a while. I had a slide on that. Thank oh, you. Sorry. No, 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 no. We will never <laughs> find it. We'll never find it. It's gone into who knows where, and it was at a cafe in Paris. There is no better place to sit and enjoy, isn't that awful? And to sit and enjoy the passing, to rest your body and enjoy the passing traffic. And to just kind of look around at your, at your neighbors, you know, and see who are these people that are also in a cafe. Ooh, did you recognize Singapore? Did you recognize Mumbai? This is what you can see out of a bus. 
Oh, that's Jerusalem with the crowds and the bus tour on and off. Uh, and that's my husband toasting you and saying, travel on. That was supposed to be the last slide. Some people say, oh, I don't want to go into sites that are, are uh, religious sites. Don't miss some of them. There's Abu Dhabi, the, the third largest mosque in the world. Meet people. Don't forget your rain gear. Here we are, uneven terrain. This is enjoy the culture. People in India put that red dot on your forehead as a symbol of welcome. Here's the way to travel. Anybody want to go this way? Yeah, I would. I would. That's Monte Carlo. <laughs> I didn't love Monte Carlo. Oh, sorry, I shouldn't say that. You think? Maybe it needs a new battery. Oh, did you? Okay. All right. Maybe it just doesn't like my pictures. Okay. Anybody else want to talk about what they have, the kind of travel they enjoy? Oh, do you have a question? Okay, good. Good. Thank you. Thank you. You are Tori. So when I travel, I can't stand for a long time without no. my knees locking up. Mm -hmm. So when you're on a tour and you have to stand and listen to the person, you know, sometimes I forget, but it's really important for me to like, just like kind of back kick my legs or pretend I'm walking or at least, you know, because it'll be Do really Do some painful. exercises. Yeah, I walk like Frankenstein yeah. Yeah. You know, after I've been yeah. standing for a while. So, you know, do you have any ideas? I'll do it. Not much more than what you just said. Anyone else have any, any ideas about how to get your body not to lock up, right? Right. Now, the doctor I heard speak yesterday said curcumin, right, would help some, it, because it's inflammation. Mm -hmm. It's inflammation that's getting us, um, and stiffness. So you have to get up and move, and do you know that there are, um, there are little, Canes that you can get that have little seats on them. Look on the internet, and they so that you can sit down. Hello. Oh, hi. Um, one of the things I take in my travel bag, and you can take it while you're out for the day if you're on the bus or something, is those little hand warmers. Yes. And if you hurt yourself or it starts to get painful, you just break open one of those, and they aren't very expensive, and just put it on the spot. Just you know, it's like a quick fix. That's an excellent idea. I'm going to do that. Thank you. There's a gentleman in our neighborhood who is um, wheelchair bound. And I was going to say. I him. don't know the name of the Sage. travel agency, but it's specifically designed for people who are in jazzies, and the entire trip is for people who aren't jazzies. Mm -hmm. I know our neighbors have gone on cruises and tours, and every single person is in a jazzy. I don't know the name of the organization. I, th I think I do. I think that organization is Sage Travel, and they have gone on Caribbean cruises where there were groups of Sage travelers or travelers with this group, and um, they've been able to go out and about. And because they were in Barcelona, I, I think about two years ago, and because Barcelona has some very rugged streets, right? And they don't want to be limited by the fact that he's in a wheelchair. So they went and bought a better wheelchair that had uh, wheels on it that could manage that type of, of um, terrain. Uh, this, is, this is the lunchbox, the Tiffin lunchbox in Mumbai. And this is another example of what you see out of a bus window. Some wonderful things you can see. Take a boat, a city boat in Prague. We've seen that one. OK, I think we're, we're going to have sufficient problems that we're going to, does anyone else have a, question, a comment? Oh, over here, I'm sorry. I find that. Uh I could be in the car like a couple of hours, but then when I try to get out of the car, and I, I take me about 
15, 20 seconds to get my knees straight. Oh, yeah. But oh, yeah. if I know that we're coming to a stop in about five, 10 minutes, what I do is I put my legs straight and then I uh, twist them. I turn my knees and keep going in and out with my knee, uh, legs. And I find that I can get out of the car quicker and a lot better. Excellent. Excellent. And that brings me to a comment. It's hard to exercise when we have knee problems, back problems, hip problems, etc. But be prepared. Start to exercise bef long before you go, six, three to six months before you go. You don't have to do serious exercise in, I mean, intense, intense, but start to exercise. Go to the gym, start to find some stairs. The only stairs I can find in the villages are at MVP in Spanish Springs. Has anybody else found stairs? Yes. yes? Did you find stairs? Oh, goody. Right outside the I was looking for stairs because I have to practice. Outside practice. Merrill Lynch and at the corner of the building where the kitchen store is Fulton Sumter Landed. There are outside staircases. And I was using them on Friday. <laughs> oh. Now, MVP, you can go in that building and use those stairs. Because there's, there are other offices on the second floor. So you don't have to be a member to go and use those stairs. So look around for stairs that are. The waterfront in. Okay, there we go. There's a possibility also. But do, you know, we're so tempted not to, not to use stairs. I'm sorry that we didn't find some of the other slides because there are some beautiful places to travel in the world. Any other thoughts, questions? There have been some excellent, excellent suggestions. Yes, sir. Uh, it seems like if you're going where it's hot, you got to have a really good hat. Oh, excellent. That wasn't on there very much. <laughs> no, it wasn't. But you know what? It, you that, first, that first slide had us, we had hats attached to. You should always have You a hat. always should. And a good hat. A good hat, right. A little hat. <laughs> um, ladies, crushable hats are in. You know, big brims protect you. That way you don't have to schlep around sunscreen. But sunscreen's also a good thing to take along, particularly if you're fair, mm -hmm. right? If you are really fair, sunscreen's a good thing to take. Yes, we have another suggestion. Bravo. There are also stairs at the Sheridan Rose Pavilion, the, um, at the preserve rather than the oh, yeah, preserve yeah. Lake. You can walk around the water, and then if you wanted to get up to the platform on the top of the, uh, ladder, the ledge, the second level, there are stairs there. Excellent. And that's a good walk. That's a nice walk, right? Particularly in the cooler weather. Dealing with hot, humid climates is difficult. It really, really is. Um, and can be uncomfortable. So my suggestion is to go to other places. There are many of them in the world that aren't so popular because I found crowds last summer in Europe and later in the summer it got very hot, very, very hot for Europe, for Europe, okay? You know, when it gets into the 80s, to 90, et cetera, it's, it's hot in Europe. Any other questions? Okay, does anybody have, may I, may I um, ask questions about knees, if anyone has questions about knees, right? Because that's what you probably came to talk about. You probably didn't come to, to listen to me talk about travel. Mary? Yes. Uh, my husband's had knee replacement, and he's got good. something that really helps him. It's a very easy, easy work, and he'll explain it to you. Okay, explain it. 
Why don't I stand up? Okay. Okay. <laughs> this is uh, Paul. My name is Paul. Uh, my wife and I live here in the villages. And since the topic, you know, tonight is mostly about needs, um, I thought I would share with you something that we went through. And he takes it when he travels, too. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, there's two things, or three things, and that is you put it off probably as long as you can, right? Mm -hmm. All right. How many people have needs that bother them and they're thinking about having them worked on? How many? Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. And then how many people have had your knees worked on or replaced? Okay. So um, what I want to share with you briefly is that all of us, including myself, when you're facing something like that, you don't really want to do it. It's not going to be the most fun you've ever had, right? Yes. So you put it off. Well, by putting it off, and I'm, I'm not here to play doctor or whatever, by putting it off, you're really, really, really harming yourself. If you're going to have to have your knee done, you Do need it. to get in and have it done. The longer you put it off, the more <coughs> deterioration you get in your muscles, your ligaments, muscles, right? your entire leg. Okay? Therefore, recovery is going to be a lot more difficult. Okay, so let's suppose it gets down to where you actually decide to have it done. I had my left one done, and I will probably, not too much longer, have the right one done. Okay, the main thing that I found out in therapy, I would go down and I would uh, ride my bike down slowly to the therapist, this was out of state, and I would have the therapy done, and Invariably, the, the therapist keeps emphasizing on the bend in the leg. So I want, to, I want you to think about the bend of the leg. Finally, I said to this guy, I said, what are we really looking for in this bend? And he said, you want to go, you want to bend your leg 130 degrees. And I'm going to show you that, and I'm yeah. going to show you what will help you, because I made this up. Okay. Hey. Uh, so, uh, you can do this laying down, or you can, you can lay down and do it on the bed or the floor, or you can stand up. Now, I made this up out of a piece of strap, okay? And you can do it with a piece of nice, uh, flexible yacht braid line, put a loop in the end, another loop here, so you can grab it. And what you're going to do is put this on your foot, lay down or stand up, and pull Pull. One guy said, how far do you pull it? You pull to your spring. Okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. I, I know, that doesn't sound not. like fun. <laughs> Basically, now the manual, the, the paperwork that's laying here says to try to go to about 110 degrees. Uh, my therapist said 130, and I can do mine at 130. I can't do it here in front of everybody because you don't want me to spring, right? Okay, so let me get my wife to stand up here and turn around right or left okay ooh ooh okay here you go see this and you you can grab it with your right hand okay you see that that it, that allows for riding of a bike yeah and you can just you know yeah. gentle yeah, gentle, right. Move right. but at your own range of motion. Now, when we, when we talk about the 130 degrees, I actually made a template out of a piece of foam cord. Okay. Shall I hold it? You want me to do uh, that? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, you can make up a template out of foam cord, but let me show you, straighten it out. My wife's leg is straight. Her leg is straight, you see that? We're gonna go to 90. That's 90, and then 30 more. So we get 120 degrees. Now, that pamphlet there tells you 110, and that's fine. But the reason for this is because this guarantees that as the years go on, that leg will function the way it did when you were 16 years old or whatever. Mm. So 
this is something to think about. You can make this up out of a piece of uh, nylon line or a strap. It's easy to do. So why did you strap, by the way? You know, one of those this is a luggage strap, right. May I use that for a minute? There you Thank go. you. If you go to exercise classes, they sometimes have you do the following. Sitting in a chair, they have you do the same sort of exercise. Want me to put it on yes, there? please. You Thank you. Okay. Yeah, good. Good, good. Put on her back. Thank you. Makes no difference. They'll have you do this type of thing so that you straighten it, which is exactly the opposite movement, right? This is called extension. This is called flexion. Now, this is, of course, the knee that I had that has the artificial part, right? And the other one can do it by itself. The object, though, I'm not doing it really well, um, and our physical therapist would tell you that, um, to do it sitting straight up and be able to push your own. I can't do that with this knee. Interesting point. Most of us think before surgery, after surgery, my knee's going to be fine, right? <laughs> my knee knows that it's not mine, right? My knee absolutely will tell you it stiffens. As some of you said, getting out of a car, it's hard. Or if you get up out of your chair right now, you've sat there for well over an hour, you're going to be a little bit wobbly at first. But this is the opposite to the exercise that you just demonstrated, right? And this one is extension. And the one that Becky showed us is called flexion. Any other ideas? Oh, yes. You're saying your artificial knee is stiff when you go? Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. It's terrible, terrible. terrible. Yeah. It hurts, right? But it doesn't hurt the way it did before surgery. That's not true of everybody. I probably shouldn't say that, right? That's true. It's not true for everybody. Everybody's different. If you, if you had surgery, if you had a total knee replacement, I did. I did too. And if you do not exercise, or if you do not have therapy and bend it, you'll have a straight leg. So yeah. try walking yeah. on a straight leg. You just can't do it. Now next month, will we have the machine here to demonstrate we'll an exercise, will you? OK, try. Good, good. Um, I did exercise. I did do physical therapy, both at home right after, and then went out to a physical therapist as soon as I was given the OK. At about three weeks, I think, to drive. Um, my knee clicks, clacks, bangs, makes a lot of noise, particularly in the middle of the night when I get up, don't we all, right? And um, it, it, I can tell that it's not mine. And I think if I had not had um, the X10 machine, then I probably would have had to go through what's called an MUA, which is a manipulation under anesthesia, which is when your knee will not extend fully and you have a bend in it. And can you imagine how hard that would be to get around? That would be painful, right? So exercise is key, once again. Exercise is key, and I don't like exercise, so, but you have to do it sometimes. There you go. Are the people who had their knees done, are they sorry? No. Has no. anybody done uh, stem cells? Yeah. Oh. Did we have any? Do we have anybody who's had stem cell? Did it work for you? No. I had uh, a different type of injection, and it did not work at all. Well, no, no, I shouldn't say that. There, there are a couple of different injections, and I'm not, I'm not able to give you all of the possibilities. One is stem cell. One is the coxcomb, I think, right? Hyaluronic acid. And the other one is cortisone. 
right? Cortisone worked for six hours for me. It was blissful, only six hours. And the hyaluronic acid did not work at all for me. Nobody here has had the experience of the stem cells that worked. Did they work for you? I don't know. Okay, let's come to you. Okay, go ahead. Say. I have a question that maybe. Hold up close. I have a question that maybe it worked on one of my kidneys because it does seem to be better. You know, I I try to be objective. Close, close up. So, uh, but there's never been a double blind study. There's never. He said there's Uh, never been a study. A year and a half ago. A year and a half 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 ago. ago. Okay, good. And your name is? Just first name. Howard. Howard says that he had it a year and a half ago. He thinks that one knee is slightly better, but he made a very important point. There has been no scientific, what was called a double blind study. That's where they do it, and you don't know what, what medication you've had. Other comments? You <laughs> Our lady in pink. Go ahead. Take I it. had my right knee replaced at the end of September, and my surgeon said, oh, you said this. the most important thing is going into surgery with strong legs and to do. I was walking with my neighbors, so I, my legs were terrible, but that was the most important thing for recovery, was going in with strong legs. And most doctors will tell you that. But most of us don't listen, right? Yeah. What is your name? Laura. Laura also has on some excellent travel pants. If you would like to come and look, because they're. <laughs> I'll tell you why. I don't travel with jeans anymore. Oh, and the gentlemen do too. I'm for wash and wear. Take the least, take the least, right? And if I can wash it in a sink, or wash it, um, and even if I go on a cruise, wh- I usually do a cruise with something else, you know, with something a little more intense before or after. And if you take something dressy, scarves are wonderful, ladies, right? You don't have to take fancy stuff on any cruise except the queens, the canards queens. It's the only time you have to take dressy stuff. Any other comments or questions? I'm hearing good stuff. Exercise is key. Yes, sir. Uh, do you think it makes much difference why you have it done? By oh, whom? by whom? Or where, or land, or here. Uh, do we dare touch that one? <laughs> do we dare, right? Talk to your neighbors and friends, uh-huh. right? Everybody has a different experience because each of us is, is a different person and our knees are, no two knees are exactly alike, right? My husband had his knees, his knee done for, with a different surgeon than I did. Um, one of my neighbors had an even, there are a lot of knee guys down here. There really are. That's why I think it's a good place to be to have knee surgery. Do you have any comments on that? I just kind of want to reiterate something that okay. maybe was already said, but maybe just Who knows? Yeah, I Introduce to yourself. Trish, introduce yourself. Yes? Introduce yourself. Oh. Yeah, I didn't get a chance uh, to introduce our group here. I'm one of the coordinators. My name is Trisha Lawman, and Deb Barker is also with us too back there. And uh, she's been a PTA for 16 years? <laughs> Since she was born. No. <laughs> anyway, uh, so, uh, and then we're her husband here, David, and he's been helping us. But I just wanted to reiterate the uh, how it is. It really emphasizes and drive home the point of getting strong before you go in for any kind mm-hmm. of procedure. Mm-hmm. So it really is a good indicator of how you're going to do afterwards. So the extension and flexion and what you're going to be able to achieve after a procedure, whether it be a partial or full knee replacement. 
is what you're able to do before. So they might measure you before, or I would ask them to measure mm -hmm. you before, kind of see, mm -hmm. get an idea of where you're at. Mm -hmm. And that's a good indicator of what you'll be able to do afterward. Um, because, I mean, just everything that they have to do inside of there internally, um, you want to have everything, uh, not only in alignment, but everything kind of being able to, uh, to stretch and flex and contract and get, you know, be strong enough to where, you know, when you come out of it, that you can, you can be, they're going to have you walk right away. They're going to oh, have you walk as right soon away. as possible. You can't just kick back and relax and put your leg up and just uh, forget about things. Because what happens is um, there's a lot of fluid because that's, uh, it's a very invasive type of surgery and it's, a, it's traumatic. It's like having a car accident for your knee. It's like, it, you know, the body thinks, wow, I've been under a lot of uh, stress, injury, fluid just rushes to that area and the fluid contains collagen, which unfortunately, you know, it's, yeah, it's part of the healing process, but if it just stays there and it stays, you know, locked in that position in the knee capsule, it can uh, produce scar tissue and the scar tissue is what kind of binds it up. So if it's not moved right away, if you don't, if you just uh, keep your legs still for too long, that's why it's so great that Mary did find us in, in, with the uh, X10 machine, which I won't go into great detail, but anyway, the X10 machine, you, um, it's, it's a rental that, you know, um, that people use in their home. They use it three times a day, and the repetition of moving the knee back and forth, back and forth, extension, flexion, extension, flexion, over and over, helps to sweep away and get rid of the fluid around the knee. So that's really, really key and important and crucial, no matter how you do it, whether it be a strap or on your own, or with some other device, but you have to keep the knee moving freely uh, back and forth in a safe way, manner to get rid of that fluid because the fluid is what produces uh, scar tissue. And uh, we've seen it before too, where people will find us maybe months later, five, six months down the road, I can't move, I'm only at 85 degrees, I can barely walk, I can't straighten. Um, it's because they either um, just had a rough time in therapy, they didn't move their knee fast enough, soon enough, and far enough um, so it's good to get your knee, um, if you're thinking about surgery or a procedure, any kind of procedure, get it, get your muscles around your knee very strong, the quadricep muscles, the hamstring muscles, squats, lunges, or even just, um, actually I was thinking about this, if you don't mind Mary, mm. um, since we haven't moved in a little bit, um, yeah, if, let's... Um, you might want to move your chair away from the table a little bit and make sure oh, you don't let's kick do this. anybody. Let's but, do this. Um, just to do why some don't, extension. Why don't we do this? On your chair. Or you can do this. That's true. You Why don't do we it. do this? However yeah. you want to do it. Um, it's just yeah. basically bending and then, uh, or flexing, extending and flexing. So just work on that a little bit. I, I encourage yeah. you to hold your leg up. Try to straighten it as much as you yeah. can. And then hold it and contract and put your hand on top of your leg and yeah. feel those muscles yeah. um, tighten. Yeah. You know, just like somebody would ask you to do like a uh, form of bicep, you know, do, do a bicep. I, that's similar to, you know, any muscle can contract and flex. You should, it should feel harder, the skin should get tucked, okay, and then retract it. And pull you pull your toes towards your nose. That's a good idea to yeah, get yeah. toes toward your, toward no, your body or toward your, your nose. nose. Okay, so flex. Just do that a few times on each side, each leg. Mm -hmm. See how far you can get. Extend and flex, all right. Then if we want to get real ambitious, what we can do is Put both feet flat on the floor in front of you. Make sure you have enough room. Put your hand, this is a very important part. Hands cross, or arms cross in front of you. Cross your chest and stand up. <laughs> Cannot push off. There you go, good job. So yes, yeah, as, you know as, as straight, we should try as straight as you can. This is a really good exercise. It's really it. hard. We've done this before in the knee group, knee support group. Um, <laughs> Past, but we haven't done it in a while. We it's hard, it. isn't it? Some music and we it's do hard. it for about a minute. Yeah. See if you can do 20, 25 reps of that. It's hard. 10, 15, go do, just do as many as you can. But the arms crossed in front, what does that make us do? You have to use your, you know, your glutes, your hamstrings, yeah. your muscles, and not your hands to push up. So that's a good exercise to do. Yep, Mary. And if if you have trouble with that to begin with, right? If you are having trouble getting your body off the chair, then just stand in back of the chair and do something like this. 
If you do that, it will strengthen some of the same muscles to the point where you can get up, right? Or at least get up better. Does anyone have any other questions? Because we've had some good stuff coming up tonight. I was, I was going to say that if I was looking at joint replacement surgery, I do a lot of research on materials, partial joint replacement, total joint replacement. And part of the reason for that is my sister had her knee done, a joint replacement, about two years ago. And she went to the first surgeon, he was very credible, uh, well respected, and he told her she needed a total joint replacement. And she went for a second opinion with another surgeon, and he said that if you have that kind of surgery done, it will be a disaster. You don't want to do that. You want to have a partial joint replacement using this material. She went to another doctor who gave her a third opinion. So yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know what that means other than educate yourself and be wary. You know, yeah. ultimately, you're going to have to kind of probably roll the dice and make the decision that makes the most sense to you. But I don't think it would be a good idea to go to one surgeon and uh, go with whatever he go said. With whatever. Uh, without asking a lot more questions and yeah. looking at other alternatives. There is a doctor who has spoken to us in the past, and that doctor um, described to us the partial knee replacement, so maybe he will come back sometime soon. Your other option is a total knee replacement, right? Um, which, as the gentleman pointed out, is a little more severe and a little more invasive, and it takes longer to get yourself back to full recovery. Um, my question is, um, when it comes to knee replacement from the front or from the side, does anybody have opinions? Most of us do. Uh, however, as, one, as my husband's doctor said, I've done it from the side for 17 years. So I think a lot of doctors this is a controversy that depends upon the doctor. Um, many of us have opinions based on um, not just the physiology of the knee, but also on the aesthetics. We'd rather have um, a side, if it's an inside particularly. But uh, it, that's totally up to the doctor. And again, do your research. Do your research and talk to people. Many, many of the doctors in this region do that side. You know, also, something else that occurred to me as you were speaking, sir, was that there's also the option now, amongst some of the doctors, not many, of giving, um, I forget what, it, what it's called, the, the artificial knee that is an exact replica of yours. Yeah, it's a three, they do a 3D model. And they do a 3D model, and that's what my husband has. So he has a replica of his own knee, you know, which kind of makes sense. I have an off-the-shelf model. <laughs> I have more trouble with mine. And he had his done before he was in severe pain. So again, that's what Paul spoke to before. Well, I thank you very much for coming. I think we've all spent a long time tonight. Do come back, and hopefully we will have doctors and physical therapists available. Thank you. Can I say something real quick? Yes. Thank you, Mary. Thank you. I'm Dr. Justin Trosclair, host of two-time Podcast Awards nominated A Doctor's Perspective podcast. I interview doctors in and out of my profession about their specialties and the occasional non-doctor special guests. But we also go behind the curtain and see what's working for their marketing, overcoming struggles, practical knowledge, book choices, and relationship advice. Join me on any podcast app on your phone or visit adoctorsperspective.net for the show notes pages and free resources. I want you to have an abundant home life as well as a thriving practice. So come on, take a listen. To learn more, visit x10therapy.com, 1-855-910-5633. Just a reminder, it's a huge help if you subscribe to, rate, and review our podcast. It helps people find us.
X10 back to full strength.